All right, we're recording. All right, cool. I'm just going to check on our Facebook real quick just to make sure, you know, uh, I know we had quite a few people saying they're going to make it. I just want to see if anybody is, you know, has any questions or uh, trying to log in or anything like that. So, okay, nothing yet. All right. <laughs> All right, so look, I'm really excited about this. I didn't know, you know, uh, what kind of turnout was going to be. This is the first uh, call, and I'm really hoping that this is the first call of many. Uh, my plan is to have one of these calls every single week. Uh, now about these calls, too, um, I don't want to run them like a webinar, and I really don't want it to be like a webinar, webinar style. I want something that I'm hoping to be uh, – that I'm hoping to be more – more uh, uh where everyone's involved in you know like i really want this to be something that's like open where anybody could ask questions everyone's voice is heard it's more of a group thing instead of just one person because uh, i already know just by looking in this group there's a lot of people in here with a lot of experience a lot of value that could add to this group and i'm really hoping that you know others can contribute to this and we could all help each other. And, uh, you know, myself, I'm here to learn as well. You know, uh, that's one of the biggest things I get out of this is, you know, I'm in the process of learning, trying to grow uh, my business and trying to learn the whole business side. You know, because the thing is, when I started freelancing, I didn't have like a group like this. I had a couple people and I was very lucky to have those couple people to help guide me along the way, to kind of help with like sort of mentorship, you know, like, there's always questions, you know, like being a new freelancer, starting to build websites for free. I mean, not for free. I should never say for free. <laughs> starting to build, yeah, yeah. Sure. Starting to build <laughs> websites as a freelancer. It just got a little tongue twisted. As a freelancer, you know, like I didn't know how to do this stuff. I don't know how to do the business part. How do I deal with clients? When a client does this, how do I handle that situation? You know, and I was lucky to have a couple of people I could go to and ask like, okay, my client's doing this. What do I do? You know, but at the same time, I, you can't just ask too many. You can't put too much stuff on one person, you know. So having a group like this, I'm hoping that this opens up like a community where we could come to each other with these things, you know, where something comes up, a question comes up or, you know, because it's always something new. Every project still to this day after years, I still got new things coming up where, you know, I, I got more experience now, but, you know, I still got questions. You know, I'm still learning. And uh, so that's my goals and my hopes for this group. You know? um, yeah, sounds good. Cool, cool. So, all right. All right, so I'm going to have to get the hang of using uh, the controls with Zoom, but I have a feeling I spent the last hour playing around with it, so I pretty much almost got it. And uh, we got a slide we're going to go off of. So, you know, this is going to be call number 001. And it's building a portfolio. And, uh, you know, so on this call, and this is how I want, you know, looking at all groups to go, like, I want it to be interactive. I want everybody to have a chance to participate. Uh, everyone is welcome to ask a question. Everybody's questions will get heard no matter what. Uh, and also, you know, the questions other people with experience could help answer other people's questions and give feedback. So it's not just going to be me answering everything. You know, we really want to encourage others uh, with the experience to also jump in and help out, you know, with other, you know, other questions to help other people. Uh, just one thing to keep in mind, uh, like going forward, we'll just go ahead and mute everybody's mics. And, you know, when it's time for your question, uh, when you want to ask a question, there's this little thing right over here on more where you could raise a hand. It's an awesome feature with Zoom and it'll let me see whose hand is raised. So that way we don't miss anybody. And by doing this as well, it gives everybody a chance and there's no talking over, you know, each other. We could keep it like organized because I'm really hoping we build this up where there's a lot of people in this group. Like, you know, we can make this pretty big right here. I know this is just the first one, but you know, so if we could just use this raised hand feature, keep your mic uh, muted 
until it's time. And, you know, I'll go ahead and keep an eye on the raised hands. Something comes up, I'll go ahead and, you know, I'll go ahead and call on you and just unmute it. And, you know, it's, it's your, your time, your show. All right, so let me see. Welcome to the first call. I'm really excited because today we just hit 500 members inside the group. I'm so excited to see that the group has, you know, already started growing. Uh, and I started seeing, I like, I'm excited to see so many people can see uh, a group like this could have value as far as helping them with their business. So, uh, you know, um, let me... Don't want to ramble on, but yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, all right. Keep it going. So let's just go ahead and start. All right. Why is a portfolio so important? First off, before we get into it, does anybody else here want to go ahead and introduce themselves? <laughs> Does anybody have any anything they want to jump in and say? All right. <laughs> I think you have to force us. You have to pick on us, Jeff. <laughs> There's not too many to pick on right now, so <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll help you out. Uh, my name's Lauren. I'm from America, but I've lived in Southeast Asia for gosh four years now, and I just started a little agency in Bali. So I've had a little agency for about one year and jeff and i have been buddies for gosh how long four years about pretty four much years. since silent yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah so it's exciting to um be here at the beginning of this with with him and with all you guys i'm glad to see you here you know uh yeah i'm just gonna I, look at the, when i started off i had two people and that that helped me out that like mentored me and that guided me and lauren was one of them you know i'm really like Glad to see, you know, her here and on this journey as well. You know. All right, cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and go into the slide. And let's just go ahead and get into the topic. And that is, let me do the screen share. I got to get used to doing the screen share. So, all right. And that is going to be why a portfolio is so important. And, you know, like, uh, I just want to start off by, by, you know, just being open and clear. Like, I just wanna be open and clear about where I'm at as well inside my journey, you know, building my uh, web design business. Uh, so a portfolio hasn't been something that I put a lot of my time and, and energy into. You know, it was something that I overlooked. Uh, I was always doing really well with getting recurring business off of referrals and, you know, just ongoing business with clients. Like my strong point has always been with uh, taking care of clients. You know, and I, I had experience from my uh, previous, you know, work that I used to do with doing customer care. So I never really put in too much uh, effort into my portfolio. And so last year, you know, I was looking, uh, last year, I, I was at the point where I'm like, I need to scale, I need to grow. And I got involved in a group like this. And that was just like the big game changer for me because uh, I got involved in a group. It was very similar to, to this right here, but it was also from people from other sides of creative industries. But, um, you know, like I really started to learn about scaling and growing and putting my effort into it. And uh, I got to connect with uh, people also inside the industry with others in there at a lot higher levels. And one of those levels, um, it was somebody, they worked for another uh, design agency. Their minimum level of engagement was $50,000 for a regular website. I'm talking about, uh, you know, a basic WordPress website, whether it was with Elementor or however it was built, it would start off at $50,000. And they got so many leads that they couldn't even take on all their jobs. And I got the opportunity to talk to... Uh, one of the guys that, you know, runs that agency right there. And we had a good hour long call. And, you know, I really wanted to find out how they got there. You know, what did they do? Like, what kind of marketing were they doing? See, I went into that call and my motive was to find out what marketing strategies they were using, because that's where my focus was at, was at marketing. 
And so I went into the call and, you know, just really got to like get to know them. And I finally asked them, you know, like, what kind of marketing are you doing? And I was so surprised by their answer, by his answer. And uh, he said, they don't do any marketing, that they don't do ads. They don't do LinkedIn. They don't put, they've never done marketing that since day one, their whole focus has been on making their work look good and on their portfolio and displaying their portfolio and dribble. That was it. And that was like, that, that was just like a game changer for me. That just like, open. that just like opened my eyes up to like, you know, where I really need to put a focus in, you know, of course, marketing is important, but you know, if you could just level up your portfolio, put all that care into it and make it look super dope that it could take you up to a level where, you know, you could, you could start to land those big clients. So, you know, that, that right there was my game changer. And for like the last, I don't know, that was about eight months ago, maybe six months ago, I've started to put that, uh, my portfolio as top priority. I started to get involved in Dribble. I started to get involved with Behance as well as my website. You know, there was also another article I read by some, oh, why did that just happen? That shouldn't even be in here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, you know, I also read another article by another big agency and, you know, it was about their portfolio and about building it and how they never, you know, it, it was a lot I could relate to, how they didn't really put everything into the portfolio. And I'm going to stop sharing. And, uh, you know, that they also were, were basically going through the crossroads I was going in where it was time to like, you know, like really level up the portfolio. And uh, what they had, what they did was they implemented a rule inside their company. And the rule that they implemented inside, inside their policy was um, that they never considered a project finished until they had the portfolio on their website and on all their social media channels. And so after I read that, and then also after that conversation I had, I started to implement the same thing. And I'm really hoping like this uh, call for, for everyone here, um, even though it's just a few number of us, you know, that it could help, you know, change, you know, the way we look at a portfolio and just the importance of building a portfolio. And I'm going to carry on. I see there's only a few people here. I know it's the first call, you know, but I'm not going to let that stop right now because I also know like we're going to record this and we're going to share it. And hopefully like other people who are watching this later on that this could help out as well. Um, you know, as they're building their portfolio and using it to grow their web design business. All right. So first off, open it up. Does anybody have any questions, any feedback, anything? I see. Uh, not as of now, we can begin. Thank you for me. All right, cool. Everyone's good. All right, cool. So let me head and go back to our slide and share this. All right, so first one, um, what if you're new and you don't have work to show? You know, this is something I went through as well. And also one of the things that held me back. One of the reasons why, you know, when I started off, I did not put a portfolio as a top priority because I felt like I didn't have work to show. I also felt like my clients, I mean, you know, starting off, clients are like mom and pops, you know, and it's like you're not getting those big names yet. And this is also a question I asked on that phone call with that uh, other, you know, top agency. And, you know, they, they, when we're talking, he looked at me, he looked at my hat. He was like, dude, it's like, like right now I'm wearing a Volcom hat. And he was like, dude, it's like, you like Volcom, right? Why don't you do a concept piece on that? And that's exactly what you can do. You know, you create your own. So if you don't, if you're just starting off right now, you don't have to wait to land the big clients in order to start building a portfolio. You start making your own portfolio right when you start. And, you know, what you want to look for is find out what you're passionate about. You know, also look at what clients and in industry you want to work with. You know, do you want to work in the medical industry, hotel industry? You know, think about the kind of clients that you like, the kind of work that, you know, that sounds fun to you. Pick those right there and make concept work around that. 
you know uh main thing is it's like you got to find out what what is fun for you what what you're passionate about what are you going to enjoy and if you're new and starting off this is a very good time for you really good time because you get to choose what you want to work with you know you can start off right now uh you know find out the industry the market what niche you want to do so if you're starting off right now you don't have your portfolio built you know look at the niche what kind of uh websites do you want to build and then go ahead and make some concept works around that and i had to take this quote right here i was doing a lot of research before this call and this quote just stood out to me do not show work you do not love doing i could spot it a mile away and that was from Christo, you know, one of the people that I learned from. Uh, and it just goes back to doing something you're passionate about. If you don't like, you know, if you don't like beauty products, don't do anything with beauty products, you know? Like, if it's not fun for you, you know, don't do it. Do what you have fun doing. Uh, the thing is, we're creatives. And creatives have that energy, you know, we have that feeling, we have that passion. We have that drive, so pick that thing, you know, you have that drive with. All right, and so we're gonna go ahead and start off with uh, where part one, starting your portfolio. All right, so where do you start off with? So first off, we already established, it doesn't matter if you're new, you don't have a portfolio bill, or if you have a lot of experience, and you already have, you know, a portfolio, it could always be polished up, it could always be improved on. So where do we start off with? Uh, first one I would highlight would be the big three, and that is going to be your website, Behance, and Dribble. Now I feel like uh, I feel like these last two get overlooked, like with especially with newer designers and myself included, where I thought it was just my website. And you know, if I could go back in time, one thing I would have changed was I would have gotten involved with Behance and Dribble from the very beginning. Uh, you know, started building that right there because these are very powerful tools right here for a designer and for building a portfolio. You know, another thing we want to start off with is the presentation. So in your presentation, when having a portfolio, you basically have 10 to 15 seconds to catch someone's eye. That's it. You know, it's just like a website. When someone goes to that opening banner, that opening statement, you just have that quick bit of time. You know, uh, let me stop the screen share real quick. You know, when you're getting on a website and you, you know, you have, you have those first few seconds really to cast someone. Like when you jump on the website, you know, you gotta it's just, you look at your portfolio the same way. You, you got that opening and someone needs to know exactly what they're there for in order to get them to scroll and start to learn more. So the same will go for a portfolio. You know, you gotta be clear on what it is that you do. You know, I've seen portfolios and mine used to be messy where, you know, a portfolio could be messy, it could be all kinds of stuff and you don't know what, what are you designing? Are you doing, you know, business cards? Are you doing websites or what is it, you know? So it's really important to have your presentation clear show exactly what it is you do. So it gets somebody to like understand what it is, to dig more and to look. And I just use the same analogy as a website on it. Next one would be on focus versus range. So there's like two different styles. I'm sure there's more, but the two main styles on the portfolio would be focus versus range. Now focus, it shows consistency and it also shows a deeper level of expertise. You know, uh, one thing about having a focused portfolio, it will give you a better chance of getting the jobs that you want. So for example, if you want to work inside the hotel industry, and you just want to build websites for the hotel market. If you have a focused portfolio, just on websites based on that market you know just designs that are for hotels you got a far better chance at landing those clients uh where range it shows versatility 
Now, range could be good if you do, you know, if you don't stick with one market and you also do more than just websites. You know, a lot of designers here might also do brand assets like logos, like business cards and might have more to do. So there's two different styles that you could uh, use on here. Both have their pros and cons, uh, but focus definitely um, has, uh, uh, will get you really good results. Uh, one thing about focus as well, there's a rule of three. And a rule of three is just to show consistency. Um, you know, so one thing to keep in mind, I think this would even go with range, where if you had at least three, like uh, uh, showing the pattern. So if you're going to do like some logos and throw it on there. All right. So if you're going to, oh, okay, cool. I'm just trying to navigate around some of the stuff right over here. So, you know, like uh, the rule of three is, you know, showing some consistency. It's really good to have in your portfolio. If, sorry, I see somebody's trying to get into the group. I want to make sure everyone can get in. Uh, yeah, so that rule of three, showing the consistency, making sure that, um, you know, there's a pattern that it shows. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take a break for a second, let you guys, you know, chime in. Uh, you know, this is a good time for q and I don't see any hands up, but yeah, feel free to jump in. Yeah, open, it's open. I'm going to drink water so you guys could jump in. All right. <laughs> All right. So one thing we want to do as well in the presentation is showing the quality of work. And just keep in mind that this will continue to evolve as your skills improve. Uh, improve. I mean, if you were to see my, my uh, portfolio a few years ago, it was not good. You know, it wasn't even really a portfolio. You know, but like every single year, you know, it's just constant improvement, constant improvement. Uh, one thing, though, you want to do is you want to stand out. Uh, you want to do more than what others are doing, you know. So it's really good to like, you know, get out there on Behance and take start looking at other people's portfolios. If you're in web design and making websites, which I'm sure you are because this is a group to help elementary users, you know, uh, take a look at other people's portfolios for the websites. What are they showing in their portfolios? You know, like uh, I see portfolios and, you know, I've made some of my own where it's just screenshots, you know, of the website. And then you go into other portfolios, there's a whole story of it. And it's showing so much, like you could tell there's a lot of work that went into the portfolio of just this one project, you know, and you want to stand out. You want to do more than what others are doing you know you want to show passion and you know when you are doing more you're showing that passion uh and then you want to make sure everything is highly polished you know you want to take time on it on there and just showing the quality and constant improving constant improving constant improving on it so that's end of part one uh i'm still getting used to the screen sharing right here Now it's Q&A, <laughs> which I tried to do a second ago, but it didn't go over so well. All right, anybody got anything? Want to add to this? Yo, go for it. Uh, so I have a question for um, everyone who is here. Um, can you hear me, first yeah. of all? Yeah. Yes, perfect. Okay, so what I want to know is that what as per you is a better way of working on a strategy of building a business. Will you go the focused way or will you go the ranged way? Because um, why is that question coming up? Like, uh, for example, when I post in Facebook groups, for example, that, you know, this is what my skills are. So a lot of people try to come up and ask me, okay, um, show me your samples and what are your work and things like that. But if I start niching down those people, I might shoo away some ones who are not in my niche, you know? So what do you think is a better way of approaching people? Like if I tell them I only make 
websites for travel industry. Uh, currently, I'm working with a travel photographer and a travel writer. So they are more or less in the same niche as me. But uh, let's say if someone altogether new comes from a hotel industry and I only try to work on travel, will it not also kill my potential business if I tell him that, you know, travel industry is my niche? Because if I can develop websites, I can develop any niche. Is it not the case, right? I can develop uh, hotel websites. I can develop. It's nice to niche down. I am with everyone on this. But what do you think is a better way of approaching situation like this? To anyone who wants to answer this question, yes. All right, Lauren, you want to get this one? <laughs> Picking on me. Um, what do you want to do? Yes. Um, so the idea is, for example, uh, as I said, if I'm working with the niche on travel industry, right? Currently, mm -hmm. I'm working with uh, two clients. One is a travel photographer and one mm -hmm. is a travel writer. So this is a focus portfolio, correct? Correct. But what... But what um, are you, are you deciding this more from like a place of fear that you are missing out on no, potential no, clients? This is not, You're just curious. Yeah. <laughs> yes. This is not from a place of sure. fear. See, because I sure. indeed agree with the idea, Lauren, that what is supposed to me will find my way to me. Right. So this is not out of fear at all. This is just to know that shall I target other niche industries or shall I just stick with travel? Will you recommend focused? Or will you recommend a range way of developing websites like some from travel industry, some from hotel industry, some from NGO industry? So what is your take on it? It's not about losing clients. It's about mm -hmm. what is what do you think is a better way of making and focusing your projects on by picking what one shall you pick? You are the picker here. That's sure. Up. Yes. Jeff, Jeff and I can certainly both answer to that. If you're just looking for opinions, not necessarily like trying yes. to dig into your, uh, why the whys. Yes. I niched down hardcore. Um, okay. Jeff did not. He okay. kept his more broad. Mm -hmm. Um, I work only, only, I still take on clients that are other. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I, we still work with a law firm, but we try to just work with nonprofits and um, okay. social enterprises. Uh -huh. The reason why I decided to do that was for our own marketing efforts, okay. because when I have, okay, I know this is a nonprofit, you know, founder, yeah. Yeah. then I can find what they're looking for and tailor my message towards them specifically. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard cases, I haven't had this experience myself, but I've heard cases of people losing to the niched expert, so to speak, because that person understood their industry better. Uh -huh. um, okay. So I feel like that for me with the nonprofit of, yes, I have all these other nonprofits I've helped. I can uh -huh. help you because, uh, because I understand your struggles specifically. Okay. Now, with that said, I have done, you know, just this last year, a startup, uh, another lawyer, um, ecotourism, you know, like mm -hmm. a lot of things besides, <laughs> besides like preventing human trafficking. Um, sometimes they voice concerns, but usually it's, it's more along lines of like, well, is this the style of work that you're looking for rather okay. than like, I know hundred percent your, your industry. I, okay. I lean on the side of niching. Um, but I think Jeff, if you want to <laughs> be the opposite. Yeah, we would love. I would love to listen some opinion from <laughs> Jeff as well on this one. <laughs> well, thank you, Lauren. First of all, I do appreciate your answer over there. <laughs> sure, no problem. Uh, well, first, I, I understand exactly what you mean because I've gone through it. You know, yeah. la last year, last year, you know, uh, I was presented with the first time with niching down, and I try to niche down, niche down. There's, there's more and more always to niche down. There True. always is. There's the market. There's, you know, there the service, the mm -hmm. message, you know? So uh, like right now, let me ask, are you already niching down right now? Um, as of now, Jeff, I am not niching down right now because uh, if I tell you, these are the initial few steps, you know, the starting steps of me building websites because how it happened was initially I made some websites for myself and some of my friends, you know? Like just to have a portfolio like you did, do it for yourself. You know, I was not looking to find the client straight up. 
So I made some travel websites because I travel, I have a travel blog. I have a couple of friends who have a travel blog. So I work for them. Now I am accepting the clients, not niching down in one word. I am looking what is their need. And if I can fulfill that requirement, yes. So as of now, I am keeping it vast from travel industry to also hotel line. Yes, not accepting everything which comes because I have to be particular about if I can really meet their requirements is my question. I do not want to take every job possible on earth, right? I have to see what is possible and can I really do that? But after asking this question to myself that can I really do that? And if I feel that, yes, I can do that depending on my past work, then I take over the project. This is how I'm working currently. That's how, what my idea is. And that's why I want to learn more about people from more people that what is a better strategy to work over there. Yes. As a beginner, this is me only creating maybe four websites now for four clients and four or five for my own, which is for my portfolio. That's all my work background. That's all. Okay. Yeah. Well, First, just to address the fear of niching yes. down and losing business. Um, other businesses that I've seen that have niched down to a market do very well. In fact, I from okay. it sounds like it's easier for them, you know. Mm -hmm. I, and I've had that same fear, but the results are there, and okay. the results are there that it's a lot easier to niche down. You know, okay. I, I can speak on my experience. Why, you know, I have a niche down is I haven't found a passion. You know, I don't have like the travel blog. I don't have like the travel and the venture. Like it sounds uh -huh. like you got the passion right yeah. there already, which is awesome. That's amazing to have. I don't have that, you know, mm -hmm. so that's why I haven't chosen an industry. You know, I have okay. chosen a, a client. I've mm -hmm. niched down to a specific client. You know, mm -hmm. I've done that, yeah. but but also like going back to the portfolio side, you know, by niching down on a portfolio and by focusing and getting a focused portfolio on one topic, you are going to get better results. And that, that's okay. just, that's just the facts right there. You know, okay, sounds you will cool. find the clients that you want. So if you're looking for the adventure clients, you know, the travel yeah. ones, you know, the ones that like backpacking and going through the Himalayas and all that kind of dope yeah. stuff. You know, you built your focus portfolio on it. That's what you're going to get. Okay, sounds good. That that pretty much answers my question. But yes, it's um, as Lauren said, it's not more out of fear, but it's more about to be creative with different industries. You will miss out what you are supposed to miss out. But as it's my initial steps, baby steps into it. So I just want to try my hands at, you know, whatever I think I can do better. That's all about it. But I appreciate you both for answering this for me and we can continue now. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Cool. Thanks. All right. Does anybody else have <laughs> any you. questions? Hi. I have a question too. Are, are you starting? Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Uh, sorry. I cannot, I cannot open up my camera uh, for some reason that I have a kind of progress setting. I didn't, I cannot figure out how to turn on my camera anyway. So, I'm Min from Korea. I live in Chiang Mai. And then I'm trying to make a website through my friends. And like I made like five or six websites of my friend's website as a like kind of to make my portfolio. So I'm trying to open up my own website to show like to show my work. But the problem, it's kind of a funny thing, but like once I look back on my work, it looks not great to put enough on the website on my website as a, like examples because you know like it means I'm growing I'm like learning a lot through the work but they're like whenever I feel like I want to put the things that I did in the past feels like it's kind of not look good doesn't look good enough and but it's already like existing website I cannot ask my client again that oh can I fix it because I look back it doesn't look good so I kind of have like hesitate to put on my like first three websites on my web uh, to my own website as a portfolio. So what would your your solution in this kind of case? I think many like uh, freelancers has a kind of similar like thought mm. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, it's never good enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it could always be better, and it's that chasing perfection. Yeah. And it's, I think it's like a trap that I've, I fall into and it's a common mm -hmm. one for a 
us creatives of that perfectionism, you know, mm-hmm. that perfectionism that holds things back right there. Yeah. Uh, let me ask, like, uh, when you're adding the portfolio to your website, are you showing, like, what you want to show? Or are you showing, like, uh, how the client's website is right now? Okay. So, yeah, I would, I would say second. But the thing is, I don't have uh, many examples yet. So I only have a five website. I think it's just, like, five is not enough to show or cut down the number. Just if I just put two, like, of the website I made, I kind of feel like, ah, oh, is it enough? And then, but do I really want to put the shitty website, shitty looking website on the, in the first place as well? I was, yeah, I keep just thinking and then didn't finish my website, couldn't finish my website because of this reason. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted, I, for me, I wanted to show the website what clients want to see. That would be my answer, actually. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. When you're showing your website, when you're showing your work on your website, how are you showing it? Uh, I usually do the like kind of full screenshot of the website and then put the link in the bottom so they can like go through the link to see the website. Okay. And that's exactly how I did mine too. That's how (laughs) I'm doing it. And this whole second part that we're about to get into is going to change all that right there. Because, uh, uh, you know, we're going to about to get into the context and how to really show it because, um, let me see, should I, do you know what, uh, yeah, I'll first answer it, but then let me go ahead and show, share the screen and just dive right into it because I feel like yeah, okay. this sure. next part is really going to help out with that right there. Great. Um, I'm going to start this screen share. All right, so the next part is going to be about showing context. And I really feel like this right here could help you out with that because I did the same thing where I just showed an image and I shared a link to the client's website. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a lot of times too, the clients, especially new, like, and don't know, you know, we're getting newer, you know, smaller businesses. They tend to make changes to the websites. Uh, the thing is when you're doing that and you're just showing the website with the image, and just a link, you're going to be judged on just by looks alone. And everybody is subjective with their taste of design, uh, including us. And that's why as designers, as a designer, like, uh, it never looks good enough to me because I'm always trying to find a better design. And then I'm always in the process of trying to get better. And then, you know, when we're in, while I'm in the process of trying to get better, I see people with better designs that I'm trying, that I'm aspiring to do (laughs) you know and i'm like i like i I work so hard i'm like and it comes out and like i finish it i'm like cool and then i see like somebody at the next level i'm like damn you know like it's not even close to them yet i feel you i feel you (laughs) but this is i think like look one thing to keep in mind is that it's always going to be improving whatever you have this year you know is next year is just going to way outdo it but you know, we still got to start somewhere. And the first thing is to add context to it because, let me see here. Uh, It needs to communicate to people. A a portfolio should not just show the image. It needs to communicate so people can understand your work and your process. And that's really the point of the portfolio. They got to get to know you and see your process. Uh, The images and the design, look at like, if you do like, Like, uh, you know, if you look at the websites that convert and that, you know, do sales, a lot of them are really bad looking websites. A crappy looking website could get a lot of sales and convert versus a website that's got like a super dope design. It's like, (laughs) you know, like, like we got different taste, you know, And, and a lot of times too, a client doesn't really know the difference between, you know, like, like, you know, something that's just like a really like new like you know new trends and you know all this stuff in the design uh the most important thing though is instead of focusing just on the design aspect and the looks is a focus on you and your process you know what challenges did you solve in the project what were the goals for the project you know what role did you play what were the deliverables what did you actually do for them uh what was the outcome 
and you know what impact did this have on your client's business this is going to show what it's going to be like working with you and so by doing this you're going to be taking all the attention off of just the looks of the website and you're going to be putting it on what you're actually doing for the client mm -hmm. now when somebody hires us for a job you know they they're hiring us because they need help with their business you know they might not even know the problem that they have they might not even know like what their website's really supposed to do for them but as we go and gain experience and start like you know like learning how to really help out a client how to really find out their problems and solve it you know this is the kind of stuff that we show inside our portfolio mm -hmm. It does make a lot of sense to put all these pointers there. All right. So, man, does this help out in any way? Like, you know, starting off? Yeah, yeah, yes. it is. Yeah. All right. And awesome, you're in Chiang Mai. I just have to say what's up, Chiang Mai. <laughs> what's up, Chiang Mai, dude? <laughs> <laughs> I had a few other people from Chiang Mai and Bangkok say they're going to show up. I'm going to have to hit them up after the call. Be like, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you know, the big part of the portfolio and like the most important part is going to be the context. That is the most important part. And that's where yes. I, that is, you know, that was my, my fault in the very beginning. You know, I did not know that. I did not know really how to build it and how to really show a project. But like each project has so much that you've done to it. You know, it wasn't just building the website. You know, you have the interaction with the client. You know, you have like all the, there's so much that goes into it. So why not show everything that went into the project? So your context and by showing it and by, you know, really yeah. describing the project and everything that you've done in it, uh, yeah. it's going to show people your process. It's going to help other people understand your process. It's going to show how you work and how you think. It's also going to show your personality. And most importantly, this is the most important part. It's going to show you can be trusted. You know, uh, potential clients are going to look at several uh, uh, portfolios. If they look at a portfolio that just has images and links on it, and then they look at another portfolio that really shows depth, it shows, you know, your ideas, it shows solutions, it shows, you know, everything about it. It's going to show the client what they're going to get and what they could expect working from you. And I guarantee that you are going to outshine anybody that just has images. You, it's going to put you at another level. All right. Does anybody have any questions or any feedback as well? Anything you want to add, especially uh, to the context part? I just have a quick question. Like when you put up your uh, content on your website, do you usually use the proofreading or to ask other people to think like, they can get delivered uh, the content you what you want to say over the text. Wait, can you ask that again? Like, like when you put up the content content uh, on the website, do you usually ask your friends or other people to read again to make sure that like you can deliver what you want to say, to the client? Because I, I many designer doesn't even put the content on on their on their. Uh, website sometimes just they to show more design skills than do you mean like on your own website like your portfolio section yeah 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 your, your portfolio section. yeah would it be your own content that you're writing about the project yeah uh no i don't ask mm. I, I don't feel i have to and it's part of our contract you know in our contracts it always says that we could show this inside our project Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 
I learned not to ask because <laughs> <laughs> I had a weird answer one time. <laughs> but, but I mean, it's usually not a problem. If a client does, you know, if they say they don't want this, you know, like, you know, if they, they say, look, we don't want you to show this as in your portfolio. Like, mm. I'll respect the client's wish. Mm. But, you know, it would have to happen at the beginning because it is in our contract. I don't, mm. The thing is, I don't want my work to go to waste. You know? Yeah, I, yeah for sure. Yeah. I put so much because I care. You know, I'm not just flipping websites, you know? Like, I, I really care. So I'm going to go the extra mile. And you know, I've never, I've only had one situation. It was weird, you know? Mm. So one, it was very strange, but I mean, it's, it's all good, you know? So it hasn't happened yet, but mm. I think the next time it does happen, I'll raise my price. <laughs> <laughs> like I can't show my portfolio. That's no problem at all. You know, I'm going to have to add $5,000 or something. <laughs> Great. But, yeah. Anybody else have anything to uh, put in it to say? And feedback, questions? Yeah, I, I feel that asking questions like this, as uh, our other friend said, is like opening a can of worms for ourselves. Till it doesn't come in the picture, we don't need to. If they specify themselves, it's good. Why should we ask that, you know? Shall I put it on my website? Because they do not know what are you going to do about that website. You know? That's I always my think take that, on it. Like using their website as an example is kind of like on another way that I can promote their business. Yes, that's true. Hmm. You can always say that the people who are coming to my portfolio will also come to your website. So you are going to have some traffic through that as well. So it yeah, makes sense yeah. there and then. Yes. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. If the project goes right, the clients are just going to be happy. Yes. You know, like I have a checklist now on our projects that, you know, every time we finish a project, I go through this checklist. Um, here, let me just, I got it right here just so I could, you know, read it verbatim. So, okay, so our checklist is one, uh, to build a long-term relationship with the client. Two is to make sure we try to get them on our maintenance plan. Three is to get a good review on Google, Facebook, and Clutch. Four is a portfolio piece for our website. Five is a dribble post. Six is Pinterest. Seven is Facebook. Eight is Instagram. Nine is Behance. 10 is case study if possible. Proof of client's online growth. And uh, then 11, my highlight is each project should have several focuses aiming to grow our company. So I kind of run through that checklist and I keep that like up there and available as we're working on the project. And, you know, the most important thing is, well, they're all important, you know, but a very important thing is a portfolio and not just for our website, but showing it across all uh, channels, you know, definitely Behance, definitely uh, Dribble. You know, you can use Facebook or Instagram, but, you know, I would just strongly suggest, you know, Behance, Dribble, and your website. Uh, one other thing, too, about um, sharing links to other people's websites, I'm very hesitant about doing that. Because, and even one thing I'm starting to do now is uh, when I do a design, like I, I create a mock up first and I show the client the design. And sometimes the client starts making changes and sometimes those changes that they want, I don't feel like it would look good, but it's not, you know, totally up to me. You know, like if the client wants to do something that I feel will really change the design and I like what I came up with better, I'm going to show my design in the portfolio, you know, cause it is what I did. And also with the link going to the other websites, I only show that link is if I'm managing their website. And I know like, you know, like I'm on top of it and I know it's going to look good. You know, I'm not going to share links to websites that I have no control over anymore. Um, can I ask a question here, Jeff? Sure. Um, when you said this, that you are not going to show the links for which you are not managing the client's website anymore. Um, I had this thought in mind. So in this situation, for example, you made a website and you are not managing it anymore. But that design was maybe one of the ones you would like to portray in your portfolio. So would you create a screenshot of the whole website and that is your portfolio there and a link 
but understandable that someone else is managing and they can make changes which are not yours. Is it a good idea to do like that, right? Or you will just take it away totally from your portfolio? Oh, no, no. I'll add it to my portfolio for sure, especially if it's a yes. piece I really like. Yes. It'll go in there. We could do screenshots. We could show the designs and then yes. the, thing, the whole content structure process. I sure. would just present in about the links, link in that. Yes, that's what the question. Thank you for answering yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Sure. All right. Anything else? If that's it, I think we're kind of like down to the wrap up right now. <laughs> let me see here. Uh, let me see what slides I got left. All right. So the end part, the wrap up. So I just, you know, I, you know, going into this, I did a lot of, you know, research. I spent like two days on, you know, reading blogs and YouTube and all that stuff. And, you know, it, I, I really think like, this is the reason why I really like doing this right here too, because I'm not just here to like teach. Like I really want to share my experience. I want to help um, new, new uh, designers, developers, freelancers, you know, I really want to help. So, you can learn you don't have to like make the same mistakes that i made and could go faster and i really think like you know like inside the elemental community there's tools now to even go faster like i really think like oh uh there's some typing going on if you can hit uh, <laughs> hit mute on that one right there all good so I'm I really, sorry. <laughs> it's all good uh, I really think like uh, now with the tools that we got and like, I hope like with a group like this, like people could go a lot faster inside their journeys, inside their careers and can move up and avoid a lot of the pitfalls. And one of the reasons why I'm doing this is it, it gives me a chance to learn too, because while I'm in this, like I'm also learning and trying to improve, especially this topic right here. Like I need to step up my portfolio game. So I got some challenges in this that I'm also going to challenge myself with. But first one uh, for the tips, one of them is to focus on context. Tell the story of the project. That is the most important thing, I believe, in your portfolio. To have that context, that story, and to have a good structure to it. Uh, another one is to keep showing your best work at the top. Most of the time when people check the portfolio, they're going to take a look at whatever's on the top left. Keep that in mind. Always make sure you got the best at your top left. Show personality inside your projects. You know, uh, do more, always do more, add more, spend more time in putting that portfolio together. Uh, be clear about what it is that you do. If you're designing websites, you know, make it clear that this is what you do. You're, you're a web designer. Uh, work on consistency. Keep in mind that magic number three. Uh, if you're going to like do banner designs, you know, make a consistent, uh, you know, uh, uh, consistent spread on banners. Same thing with landing pages and etc. cetera. Uh, do more than others. Uh, show scale. Use like, you know, use the desktop, use the mobile frames. If you're doing other things like brand assets, like logos and, and things like that, do the, you know, show what it looks like on business cards. Show what it looks like with other people. You know, add different perspectives, not just the screenshot. You want to show what it looks like in real time. It's a huge help to show that. I mean, you see, like, the, the photos of, like, you know, some stock photo with a dude, like, on his computer. But, like, showing, like, what the website looks on that computer. What it does is it shows real life of what the design will look like. And another one is just keep focusing on the quality of work. Keep putting the quality of work uh, up there. That, do you know what, when, that, that, that phone call I had last year with that other agency, when they told me they scaled up their business to that level and they got that size of clients, all because they focused on the quality of their work. And you know that, that just showed me the potential that I could do, not some fancy marketing trick, not some, you know, oh, there's a, you know, just, just the quality of it. Man, the two big things not to do, have no yeah. context, don't have just images, and the other one is spelling errors. Make sure you have 
no spelling errors. You will lose jobs with that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, I have um, I have a talk about the portfolio. Sure. Maybe this is uh, this is important. I think portfolio is a uh, tools to communicate with your client. I think it's important. And design is all about. Uh, I don't know. It's 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 talk about problem solving. So if we know about design, what is the design and what is this? What is a portfolio? I think from problem solving number one and number two is how to communicate with your client. I think this is a uh, fundamental. All That's right. my talk. <laughs> nice. Hey, what's your name? Uh, my name is Narwasto. I I know it. it's hard to spell it. <laughs> How you say it again? No, no. Narwasto. Narwasto. Okay. Cool. Where are you from? Indonesia. Awesome. Hey, so is Lauren. So, uh huh? Yeah, Lauren's from Indonesia too. Yeah, she come from Bali. Yeah. <laughs> we already <laughs> chatted. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. Awesome. I. I do you know what? Uh, definitely. It's, it's to communicate. You, you know, you hit it right there. It's all about communicating, showing how you think, you know, and what the clients could expect to get from you. Yeah. Uh, if you talk about the design is subjective, I really agree with, with that because if we talk about the site or website or maybe another design itself, it's talk about how a website or another things you communicate with your client or communicate with your uh, with user. That's that's the core, I think. It, that's a fundamental. All right. In my, in my talk, <laughs> in my humble opinion. Nice, man. Nice. I hope you're on more calls because it sounds like you got a lot of gems. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I'm having a problem with my mic. Maybe the soundbar problem. Okay, check, check, check. <laughs> okay. <here we> go. <laughs> All right, man. Cool. Anybody else got questions or anything else? No, man. I'm just thankful for this call today for sharing your experience. And hopefully we all look forward to learn more and share within our community like this in future. Yeah, yeah so I, I really appreciate that you hosting too. And I, I'm looking for the other topics to talk about, like about like the marketing side or other like a client side or other business ways. <laughs> Or, or Lauren will be can sharing about Indonesian market and website, <laughs> something else like that. I'm still learning. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's hard. <laughs> I know it's yeah. hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Appreciate all of this, and thanks, Jeff, for for yeah. taking the lead on all of it. Uh, well, thank you guys for being here. You know, you guys made it happen. Uh, I'm really excited about this to get this started. You can see my dog back there. He's also yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like finish and walk me, but you know, like I really, uh, I hope that this could grow into something, and it yes. could like uh, be. I, I just hope that this could be a community that others could come to and get that kind of help. You know, something I wish I had when I started. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we. One thing I really uh, that was attractive to me when I started learning web development was how supportive it was, you know, how supportive other people were, because I came from another industry where, you know, people stepped on each other's toes. You know, mm -hmm. you had to like watch out and stuff like that. It was so stressful and, and just unhealthy. Uh, and you know, it was, it's a complete different over here. Like, yeah, it's just it's a, it's amazing. You know, so I really look forward to these. My goal is to have one of these a week. We could play around with different times, you know, because there are going to be people from around the world see what will work best. We had somebody in the group, though, bring up a good question about pricing. Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> it's very difficult, like, how to evaluate myself. Come <laughs> <laughs> on, first, that's a very hard one to learn with, you know. And I think I, it took me, you know, I'm barely getting my head around it. You know, like, feel like I'm starting to get paid what I'm worth. But I didn't start learning how to get paid what I'm worth until I got involved mm -hmm. in one of these groups until I got involved, you know, with like learning about the business side. 
I didn't know about the business. I worked in construction. You know, I, I didn't know about business. I didn't go to school for this. I was just excited to build websites. I was excited somebody yeah. was going to pay me for this. You know? I, I have a kind of funny, like, uh, story that I have that I, after I made, like, three websites, trying to find another client in Chiang Mai because I always think that face to face is working better than like a screen to screen but the people are here their budget is so so low so they even doesn't want to pay me any like any single money and then I was like start to doubt myself I'm not like well your my work is not good enough to get paid but actually it depends on where the market is the pricing is like really diverse mm. Hmm. I think Bali probably would have this kind of similar problem as well. Like what people are looking at is quite a very low value or like they're trying to price down a lot more than like irrational price. Yeah. Yeah. It, hmm. it happened in, in Indonesia too. Uh, hmm. It's such a problematic, but I have uh, some solving. Uh, solve, uh, I have a solve about that. I know how to deal with that. Hmm. So you can, so the only thing that you need to do is approaching a company, not a person. You need to find which, who is the decision maker is. So you're trying to approach the, uh, like the bigger clients, like lending, like kind of, it means like bigger lending on the bigger clients. Uh, in, 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 I, in example, uh, if you in Indonesia, you, you need to find a big company or maybe a medium-sized company. You can search it through uh, Google My Business or maybe through Google Local. You need mm -hmm. to find, in example, you need to find uh, printing or maybe uh, the, uh, the event event management. And when you type it, when you typing into the Google, it will show and you need to approach them with your portfolio and with your offer too. So I think pricing is so such a good, good topic to talk about mm. because in different region, uh, it has a different pricing too. So I have some friend uh, working in Germany. I, he, he's selling my services. <laughs> And it's pretty different comparing to Indonesia and Germany as well. If I have some Germany client, they will pay me around ten thousand, ten thousand dollar. Uh, in Indonesia, you only get about, I think, one thousand until six thousand mm dollar. -hmm. But it depends. It depends on your client budget. In Indonesia, in Indonesia, you can get more than that. Uh, because we we know how to deal with it, we know uh, we have some legal and we have some lawyer, and and we know how to approach it. <laughs> yeah, and well, I think, yeah, yeah. Man, I I learn I learn by people by people. Yeah, man. I think like what he's trying to just get across is you know you just got to go after bigger clients, and uh, yeah, I could tell you from my experience here in Chiang Mai. I've had quite a few big projects over here, you know, that okay. paid a lot. So mm -hmm. the, the clients are out there. Uh, I know my- Where are they? I know exactly what you mean. On my first job in Chiang Mai, I got paid like 8,000 baht, which is like 200 bucks for like mm -hmm. a 24 page custom built HTML, <laughs> CSS, JavaScript website, you know? But I've had it. No way, no way. <laughs> But I've, I've landed jobs in here that were over 3,000 baht, 300,000 baht as well. And I got, you know, some clients that do pay really good monthly. Uh, yeah. you, know, there's, you just got to find those businesses. But I think this is a great topic to take into the next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah pricing and that. maybe, yes. I think pricing and maintenance and things like that can be a good idea for the next call. Yeah. Rest, you are the one who can decide about it and see how it rolls. Yes. <laughs> Full time maintenance as well. Yeah. Well, maintenance, I got planned, and that's a separate call right there because yeah. I love maintenance. I love it. Lauren knows. I love my maintenance plans. It's such a game changer. But I, you know, like I've done some WordPress meetup groups inside the area on maintenance. So I think we'll do pricing. And then we'll do a separate one on maintenance because maintenance is like its own. 
I yeah. think it's its own thing right there. But okay, sounds good. Mm -hmm. Cool. Let me see. I think I had real quick. Let me just share the last two of these that I had. All right, so let's go ahead and end this off on a challenge, and that's for everyone here, as well as anybody inside the group that is either going to watch this or just part of the group. And the challenge is, first one, number one, set up a dribble and be hands account if you don't have one yet. Don't just rely on your website. Let's get these other two, especially Behance. Behance, I feel, might be the most important one because you could really show context into your design and you could become discoverable on there. I just started Behance maybe six months ago and I've already mm -hmm. been getting leads and job offers through it. Behance. Second one is to add one project to your portfolio within one week. And this is my, I'm including myself inside this challenge as well to take time and add one, one project. And then next Friday, we're gonna share it inside the groups on Facebook, in the Facebook group. So this challenge is gonna to go to everybody inside the group. I'm gonna post it in there tonight, as well as uh, just a video playback of this call. Mm -hmm. And then the last part is thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you guys for making this happen. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, so I think is, does anybody else have anything to add before we end the call? No, I just want to say we are grateful for this today and look forward for more. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> thank it you. is a good can, inspiration for me. Can we, can we get the PDF or maybe the presentation? Yeah, yeah, I'll go ahead and make a PDF and share it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, all good. All right, guys. Well, thank you again, and uh, stay tuned. I'll have everything posted uh, by this weekend for next week's call. And uh, oh. all right, cool. That's it. <laughs> namaste. Namaste. Take care. Thank you. Right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Have a good day, guys. Enjoy. Have a good day. <laughs> have a good day.